Hey everybody, this is Tim with Tacky Fly Fishing with another Fly Tie Friday. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. So uh, this week I'm tying a bug um, that is affectionately called Tim's Mullet. Um, the reason for the name has nothing to do, it does not resemble a mullet pretty much in any way, shape, or form, either the fish or the haircut. Um, aside from one, one fact, um, it's got, uh, it's incredibly party-like on one side and incredibly business-like on the other. And so that's where the name came from. Um, but don't, uh, don't be confused uh, when you don't see it look necessarily too much like, like a mullet. So basically this bug is tied on a, a slight curve uh, hook. Um, I use uh, whatever thread you want to use is totally fine on this specific bug. I'm tying it on a, a size 14 um, and I use an undersized tungsten uh, bead. So this is a 3.30 seconds um, bead. And basically one of the goals of this fly, it's a prospecting nymph. Um, you can tie it in tons of different colors and I'll show you those kind of at the end. Uh, but the goal with this, with this specific bug is to try and maintain a really, really sleek and slim body profile. Um, uh, one of our owners, um, Spencer Higa, tied one of the coolest flies on earth that we'll tie here one day called the called Higa's SOS. And I think one of the beautiful things about that fly is it's just got a really slim, sleek profile for it. So it represents a lot of different things um, at once. So to start um, with this specific version, I'm going to tie it in blue. Um, and basically I'm using a blue wire and blue hollow tinsel. Um, and those two different uh, materials represent kind of the top and bottom of the fly, and I'll show you how that works. Um, I tie both of them in back to the back of the fly, ensuring that the blue hollow tinsel is stacked right on the very top portion of the shank there so that we can, we can pull it back uh, easily here in just a moment. So once they're both anchored onto the fly, I go ahead and tie the thread up the hook. just to about uh, three quarters of the way, maybe two thirds of the way up the hook. And I start wrapping the wire. So I wrap the wire side by side um, to five, on a size 14 hook I use five wraps. Four, five. And once I hit the fifth wrap, I actually use the wire to lock down the tinsel. So I, on the sixth wrap, then I lock down that hollow tinsel. And then I start over again. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on that sixth wrap, I lock down the hollow tinsel. And you can kind of see the effect that you get there. And that'll go all the way up um, to about uh, two thirds up that, up that bug. So once the back portion of the fly has been loaded, you can already see kind of on the top is the party. Underneath is the business portion, if you can call it that. That'll get a little, little bit even more pronounced here with this next section of the fly. Um, but so once we're here, I'll go ahead and load on a thick piece of opal tinsel. Um, this just represents kind of the casing over the back of the fly, if that's what you can call it. This really is a prospecting fly. There's not looking for to represent anything super specific with this one. Okay, once that's on board, then I'm going to take uh, a dark UV dubbing, so you'll, you can see just a little bit of a UV flash um, here with this specific dubbing, and I try to get it on there really, really tight. Um, I don't want this to be a really um, buggy and to stick out everywhere. Um, I want it to be super duper tight. So you can see basically how tight that whole thing is wrapped there. And add just a tiny bit more. This again is designed to just maintain that really slim kind of scrawny profile of this fly. Okay, so once we get that on I'm just gonna wrap a couple small wraps with this uh, black dubbing for this specific color fly it's going to be black dubbing the others as you'll see will the dubbing will get as close to matching really the color of the fly the rest of the fly as we can get 
Um, and then while using dubbing, I wrap in these um, these centipede legs or whatever, just to add a, add some interest to the fly. We put them approximately the same spot on both sides here. Once that's in, we'll wrap dubbing the rest of the way up right behind the head. And then we bring that opal tinsel over the back. Okay, so you can see basically what that ends up looking like up top here. Cut that portion off. And then I like to, without even whip finishing, just add some of the more stout uh, UV adhesives create kind of a big shell over the back okay once that's done we can cut off this uh, that adhesive actually forms a knot for me effectively it doesn't really form a knot but it locks down the thread and then we can cut this these legs off approximately the same width there and so what you can see now is the mullet right we've got party on top Quite a bit more business-like on the bottom. I don't know if that really works, but I really, I've never been able to have a mullet, and I, who knows, I might want one one day, but I'm confident based on um, just knowing my wife that this is about as close to a mullet as I'm ever gonna get. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, I'll show you quickly just a couple other colors. Here's kind of a rusty red version. This one we might wanna call the ghost of the mullet. I don't know, it's just, Kind of a cool looking one. Got a nice olive color. Maybe the midnight mullet or something like that. Anyway, you can do a lot of different stuff with these. I like them a lot. Um, cool looking bug. Um, and they'll fish really well as well. So make sure to subscribe to us on, on YouTube. Uh, definitely uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and we'll see you guys next week.